externally. So that's that's the whole process. Okay, so it's a non-divisible part of stock material for which a separate book inventory exists. Okay, what we see as the book inventory is really a total of some of these things. So each stock management unit is counted separately. That is, when you say physical inventory procedures, then somebody is going and physically counting those things, right? So the unit at which this whole thing is managed is the SMU, stock management unit. So each one is counted separately. And of course, if you find any differences, as you will in a large company, the differences are also posted per stock management unit. Now, is stock management unit different from stock keeping unit? Uh, it could be the same thing also. But stock keeping unit is actually, it identifies a specific product. Specific product. In, in Costco and yeah. Sam's Club and all that. Sure. But here that may not be. You may have multiple stock management units for the same product. Okay, so I think it's slightly different. Okay, so the basic steps in the physical inventory process are, you're not going to you know count products for the entire company at the same time. Okay, that you won't do. You'll be doing periodically. Some items, some items now, some items later. You'll have some systematic way by which you do that. So first step is you create what are called as physical inventory documents. Right? Physical inventory document, you can think of it simply as a sheet of paper containing information as to which are all the stock keeping units that need to stop management units that need to be counted. Okay, so that's what a physical inventory document is. So based on your schedule of what you're going to inventory at what time. You generate a physical inventory document in which you say these are all the stock management units that I will include. Okay. That is printed out, the physical inventory uh, list or physical inventory document. Right. And then somebody goes and actually counts the stock management units. Right. And then they've got the actual counts entered on paper perhaps. Then they bring it back and enter the count against the physical inventory document. Right? That, that's really what happens. They say, okay, here I found 200, here I found 50, there I found zero. And they enter all of those numbers. So once they do that, the system is going to analyze the differences and see if there are differences. Some of them will match, some of them will not match. Right? And then you analyze the differences. You don't, you don't simply say, oh, I'll post it. You analyze the differences. Sometimes what will happen is, the differences might be very large. So then you suspect and say, well, could be something wrong. Maybe, uh, you know, maybe you didn't see properly. It was there, but you didn't see it. So you're saying it's not there. So, you know, there could be some process of uh, verification that needs to be done. But once you've figured out, yes, these are all real differences, then you post the differences. Right? And say, okay, we thought they were 500. There are in fact only 480. You post the difference of 20. Okay? So that's really the whole process. And once you do that, of course, there will be, you know, the stock on hand would be reduced. Your inventory valuation would be affected, right? O asset valuation is affected. So all of that takes place. That's really the whole process. Okay, so it's possible to mass generate these physical inventory documents because in a large company, they're dealing with thousands and thousands of items. So you need convenient mechanisms by which you mass generate it and then distribute it to various parts where they'll go and count. Okay, so it's possible that when you're looking at the count, it could be suspect, meaning the count looks too too uh, too weird. Then you say, okay, go recount it. So it's possible to set up a recount process. Okay, so this is just the contents of the physical inventory document. It's got a header, a plant, and the physical inventory document has a document number by itself. Okay, it has a document number, uh, and then you just indicate the stock management unit by giving all of the details in the plant, the storage location, the material perhaps. Somehow you identify what is the uh, stock management unit that is to be counted. Okay, and then uh, you know the date on which you plan to count, etc. Uh, etc. Et all of those kinds of things is what it has. And for each item you're going to indicate the stock management unit that you're going to count. Right, so there are lots of items in the document. This is the header. You're going to have many items. And the items are basically the various SMUs 
that will be counted. And there are some things you can do and some things you can't do when you have generated the physical inventory document. Uh, you can uh, enter the, you can change the planned count date, you can change the uh, posting block, we'll talk about that later. Uh, freeze book inventory, we'll speak about it later. But on the header, you can change some of these things. The physical inventory number. Okay, this inventory number is just a reference number. It's not the number of this document. Okay, this inventory number is, uh, you may be doing physical inventory many times during the year. This is just some kind of a reference number to that. Okay, it, it has nothing to do with the number of this document itself. It's just a way to facilitate searching for physical inventory documents. Okay, so those are all the kinds of things that you can change in a physical inventory document. And for the items, uh, you can change some of the things for items which have not yet been counted. Counted items, you cannot change anything because it's been counted. If you need to change it, you will do a recount. But otherwise, you can change some of the stock management unit characteristics. Okay, so those are the allowed changes to physical inventory documents. And of course, you can always enter new items or you can delete the whole document. Okay, so now uh, you can see here that when physical inventory operations are going on, it could be a little cumbersome if at the same time people are issuing and receiving goods. Right, you're trying to fix the count of the item. But if at the same time transactions are taking place, it could be a problem. So to deal with that, SAP has two methods of dealing with it. Okay, one method is called posting block. Okay, that is essentially what you say is, uh, from the time the counting took place till the time the count is entered into the system, don't allow any goods movement for those stock management units. Okay, so in this case, that would be for a whole day. Uh, no, no mom goods movements are allowed for that stock management unit. Right. So then, after then, therefore, the book inventory will remain. Uh, whatever the correct figure was and then when you enter the count and then after that you can post the differences right so transactions can start taking place once you finish entering the count and then after that you can post differences in this case the difference happened to be that it was uh, five extra okay we thought that we had 250 but it turned out that we had 255 right but the posting block is active between the time you counted and the time you entered the count. So you say no goods movement during that time. You shut down for that SMU. Right? And the way you will indicate this is by putting an indicator in the uh, physical inventory document. And that basically will go and put an entry in the material master. And thereby it will enable you to block it. Okay, So posting block is one approach where you stop move, you know goods movements altogether for that stock management unit right but sometimes that may not be feasible it might not be practical for you to say no goods movements okay so then you have another alternative called as freezing book inventory okay freeze book inventory what it does is it allows goods movement to take place but it takes the value of the book inventory at the time you started counting and stores it in the physical inventory document Right, so that you can then go and change it. We have the figure. Okay, that's that's the basic idea. So here, what happened was, you you had a stock of two fifty, right, and then uh, you you were going to start the counting. So at the time you started the counting, you did the freezing of book inventory. Right, so the book inventory was two fifty at that point before this issue took place. Right, so the book inventory was two fifty. You recorded that in your physical inventory document, but you didn't do any blocking or anything. You allowed them to continue to use the warehouse, to use, to use that stock management unit. So they did all kinds of things, you know, they issued materials, received material, again issued material, right? So when you entered the count, you then adjusted it back with your frozen book inventory, right? So the count that you entered is compared not against the current stock, but it's compared against the book inventory that you noted down. And whatever difference is, you can post. Okay, so that's the second approach. So the two main approaches are posting block 
and freezing book inventory. Okay, posting block prevents good movements for this uh, affected stock management units. Freezing book inventory allows it to go on, but it just remembers the book inventory as it existed at the time of counting. Okay, that, that's really it. Okay, and uh, this is set in the PI document header as that information. Okay, so here we are just seeing how the process flows. So you first create uh, the physical inventory document. At the time the physical inventory document is created, its status is not yet counted because the document was just created. Right? Then somebody takes the document along, does the counting, comes back, enters the count. And at that time the status is count entered. Right? At this point, after this, what could happen is you could say, okay, the counts look good, let's post the differences. So then the process is complete and the status is counted posted. Or it could happen that you suspect the count, you don't think it's correct. You say, okay, recount this particular item. The status is uh, counted and recounted or recount requested, maybe it should be. They call it recounted and then it goes back. They create another PI document and go through the process. Okay, so that's the overall process for uh, physical inventory. Now, question? Well, when we say the differences were in order to post the differences, right, you suppose you expected 1 million units and you found uh, 1 million and 1, right, should we treat that as a difference? You know, it's, it's not a, not a big deal of a difference, right, it's not too big. So then you can say, okay, go ahead, post it, doesn't seem like it's a mistake or anything, it could be correct, right. On the other hand, if you expected 500 and you found 600. Now that's a huge difference. So you may say, hold on, don't post this. Let's verify, make sure that, you know, what, is, what went wrong. So that is, you define that by setting a percentage deviation below which the system will allow you to post the differences and say, yeah, this looks fine. Above which it will say, no, you know, you can't just post it. This is too big a difference, right? And then you may have to analyze it and then do a recount. Or of course, your analysis may reveal that it's indeed correct and, you know, so something happened that caused this big difference. That's possible. Okay. Uh, and they have something called as a zero count facility, which is basically that many times what will happen is uh, for lots of items, there won't be any stock, right? Because you may be dealing with tens of thousands of items, but many of the items you use occasionally. So, you know, maybe 25% of your items, there may not be any stock. So instead of going and physically entering 0000, they have this facility for entering a zero count, right? So you say zero count and it will zero out many of the items, okay? Uh, so when you post the differences, uh, when you post the count, enter the count, the system generates what is called as a list of differences, okay? So the list of differences contains all of this information, the quantity counted, the book inventory, the difference quantity and the difference amount, right, quantity and value. So that you may say, oh, it's only one piece different, but that one piece might cost a million dollars. So, you know, there has to be, you, there's a value point and also a, a quantity point. So it shows you both the differences, okay. So once you do this, then you can enter change and display count in the list of differences. You can post a difference, right, or you can display or change the document or you can recount the whole document or recount an item. These are all the various things you can do with that. Okay, so posting differences. So you've got the difference list, you post the differences and uh, uh, you know there's also a control because if you're posting differences and you're posting lots of, you know, in terms of value or quantity, there's tremendous amount that you're posting. In other words, even though individual items are within the tolerance limit, overall, it may still be huge, okay? So that is what this is. So there is a tolerance group which is defined and a person who is working on it has belongs to a certain tolerance group and you are allowed to post up to a certain level, right? So if it exceeds your tolerance group, then you won't be able to post the differences. So that's just the kind of control that they have. And once you are able to post the differences, then uh, once again, it will generate a material document because there are differences, there's been 
you know, change in material status and an accounting document because there are value difference. Okay, so that's uh, that's what really goes on here. Okay, now you can post the differences from the difference list itself or you can post differences through other transactions which the system supports. <coughs> okay, so here I just spoke about this that there is a document tolerance and an item tolerance. Right, so it's possible that somebody may meet all the item tolerances but exceed the document tolerance. So then that's the whole point. Okay, now the posting period, this is another point. Right, there's after all fiscal years issue, right, that you did the counting in one year. If you try to enter it in the next year, well, the old fiscal year is over and so on. Okay, so the posting period is determined by the time when you first entered the count. Right, so when you enter the first count, that is considered as the posting period. And unless you are going to allow posting of posting to prior fiscal years, you have to complete all the posting in that posting period, all the counts in that posting period, right? Otherwise, the system won't, uh, you know, it won't allow you to post backwards to the previous fiscal year. So that's the point about how it determines which is the posting period. Okay, so the uh, fiscal year is of the document is based on the planned count date, not on the actual count date, but the posting period is dependent on the first entry of the count. Okay, so that's what we had said. Depends on whether back posting is allowed or not. Okay, now the the main the key procedure I won't say key the standard procedure for physical inventory process is what we just saw. Create an inventory document, count, enter the count, post the differences. Okay, so that's the standard process. But you know, in practice, you've got to have other simplistic variations that are possible. Right, so uh, this is the main flow. The top row represents the main flow, but the bottom row is also acceptable. That's another process, the second row, in which you count some stock management unit and then without a PI document, you directly enter the count. Okay, you directly enter the count and the system will create a physical inventory document retrospectively for you okay and then now you have a physical inventory document you've got the count you've entered the count in fact you can post the differences okay so essentially what you're doing here is directly entering the count okay directly entering the count for a stock management unit and the system really will generate a list of differences and then you decide whether to post it or not okay so that's a variation that is possible uh, uh, here, this in this variation, you create a physical inventory document, right, and then you do the entry of count and posting of differences in one shot. Okay, the system allows that also. You don't have to enter the count, get the difference document, and then post it separately. That doesn't have to be a separate step. You can do these two things together. Or alternately, you could do everything in one shot, which is enter the count and post the difference and the system will create a physical inventory document for you and manage it internally. Okay, so these are the variations that are possible. That is the just, uh, you know, the standard textbook procedure, but these are all things that take care of what happens in the real world. Okay, so now uh, comes the issue of how do you count inventory, right? You've got, you know, thousands of items that you're dealing with. So, you can't be counting every item and how frequently do you count? That's another issue, right? You can't be counting every item every week because then you won't be producing, you'll only be counting. <laughs> okay, so there's that issue. So what do you do? So what companies typically do is they do what is called a cycle counting, right? In cycle counting, they categorize the items into different importance categories. So for example, here we see A, B, C, D. And they say A items are very important to us. And we can't afford too much of discrepancy in those. So we'll count them every month. Okay. So it's 12 inventories per year. We'll count them every month. B items, we'll count them every two months. 
C items will count every four months and D items will count only once a year. Right. So you do that and then you, you can then follow this procedure. That is when you are generating your physical inventory documents, the system will take account of what category of item it is and when did we last count it and then it will take account of that and generate the items to be counted. Okay, so that is the whole idea of cycle count. Now how do you determine this ABCD? You will determine this ABCD based on value for example, right? And also you may, you know, earlier we said something is ABCD. First of all, you have to determine how many times you are going to do A count and B count and so on. We just showed, uh, you know, 12, 6, 4, 3, 1. That is just something arbitrary. So you can decide what it is going to be for your organization. So you determine that. But you also have to determine what is my definition of an A item, right? What is the definition of an A item? So you may say, well, out of my total inventory is the, the items that constitute 50% of the value are A items, right? The top items constituting, I mean, in other words, you find the value of all the items, order them, and then say, uh, you know, the items together whose cumulative value is 50%, will all be A items. Now typically there will be a few items that are very high value, right? So there won't be too many items in your A category, but they will account for 50% of your inventory. Okay. So you will say those are A items. And then you will similarly say the next 25% are B, the next 10% are C, etc. And then the system can go and pull out that ABC categorization for you. Okay. Now either you can keep those categorizations fixed or you can make it dynamic based on current database values, right? You could do that. And for some items, so here you see an example. In this example, they said 56% is A, okay? So by their classification, A should stop at pump 9, right? Because pump 9, the cumulative value is 56.16%. But for whatever reason, they say pump 11 is an A item. Arbitrary decision. Pump 11 is an A item. So you can do that also and just fix it as an A item. So you could do dynamic, but then you also have the flexibility to fix some of the items as important A items and then the system will treat it as an A item. Okay. And some other kinds of analyses are possible. Uh, so for example, here you can say uh, for A items, there are 10 materials, 12 inventories, okay, and then uh, because totally it came to 120 counts and so on, right? So you could figure out your effort, counting effort, right? And then based on that, you could do some analysis and then judge what should be A items, etc. Okay, based on this kind of analysis. Okay. <clears throat> so that is ABC analysis for cycle counting. So cycle counting uses the concept of different counting periods for different items and more important items being counted more frequently and importance of items being determined based on their value, right? How much of cumulative stock value do we have? Okay, so that completes our discussion of uh, inventory and warehouse management.